I consider this question to be one of the all-time hardest. Definitely going to be up there. But what we have here is a conveyor belt driven at velocity V by a motor. So you know what conveyor belts are? There's a wheel here. It kind of keeps going and you can drop stuff on it and the stuff will move. Sand drops vertically onto the belt at a certain rate, mkg per second. So imagine lots and lots and lots and lots of sand coming. And the sand will come here and probably just, you know, drop off there at the bottom. Okay, so what is the additional power needed to keep the conveyor belt moving at a steady speed when the sand starts to fall on it? So you see what's happening here is if there is no sand, the conveyor belt itself is actually not very heavy. So it can turn. But listen, then you keep dumping sand. The conveyor belt will be like, wow, I need, I, need, I, need, I need some more power needed to push this extra mass and keep it moving at a steady speed. What speed? I don't know. Mm, velocity V, perhaps? Okay, so we say we need to keep all this moving at velocity V, any point on this conveyor belt. So you're going to need some extra power, extra force by the engine. How do you find the answer, though? Let's see what we might try. We can say miss mm, power. Ah. Power equals to change in energy over time. Maybe we can use that. Okay, what will we use then? So if we use this method, we might think of kinetic energy. Maybe it means the, the sand, the moment it drops down, then it gains kinetic energy and starts to move to the right. Hmm, maybe. That will be saying here is at first zero, and then you start moving, V. So then you, if you use that method, you would do something like this, half mv squared over t. And then you would say m over t is the rate of conveyor belt. I know they use m, so we'll just do half big M v squared. It's a miss, we found the answer. But unfortunately, if you chose c, that is incorrect. There is something wrong with this assumption. If we thought of this, how do we know the velocity is zero? Or the speed is zero? It's a little bit more complicated here because the sand is moving down and somehow it will change direction and start to move to the right. We cannot just say kinetic energy is not a uh, vector. We cannot say, oh, we just take the horizontal component of kinetic energy. No, it doesn't work that way. So the error lies in this assumption that the initial ke is zero. We can't assume that. So then what, what, what can we do? There's a vertical kinetic energy, there's a horizontal kinetic energy, and they both have to be considered. But we don't really have the information for the vertical part. So how? Ah? So that means the other option that we have now is we cannot use this energy method already because we don't have enough information. So that means you have to use the vector method which considers forces. So then P equals to F times V. What F, what V? So this sand will start to move to the right with certain velocity because of some force acting on it. Friction lah, whatever lah. And if we only look at the horizontal component, we resolve all the velocity to horizontal, ah, then we can say, ah, yes, initial horizontal is zero. Then you speed up to some value v, only in the horizontal. And this one is better because you can see very clearly, force pointing to the right to get the sand moving, velocity component to the right and to the right. We don't care about the vertical. So now we submit the values and see what we get. Force, ah, we don't have values for force. But we do know another equation for force. Based on Newton's second law, we have the force equals to change in momentum dp dt. So let's sub that in. So p equals to change in momentum over time times v. But change in momentum, we can further express it. I'm going to throw away the delta already. So this one we can do m delta v. Time is just general in time now, okay? Per unit time. So many v here. v, 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 v. This delta v, uh, you start where? Uh? You start at zero, you end at V. So I don't need to delta V, just write V can already. Just V. Then we recognize that M over T 
is the rate of the mass dropping. So let's replace that with the big M or slanted M. And we have V squared. So that will be the power here. So actually the correct answer is D, not C. I'm going to circle that. So remember this assumption, we don't know for sure because there's also some vertical kinetic energy which we don't know information about. So we stick to the force, resolve everything horizontal and we know for sure we can use this. Okay, hope that's helpful. So that's all for this video. I'll see you in the next one.